Hello. We have two stories today and one longer one that will be referenced at the end, but you'll have to wait for the next video because it's just too darn long. However, these are some of my favorites in a while. And no, it's not just because they're about food. I don't have a problem. Who said I had a problem? I thought I deleted all those comments. <laughs> hey, man invented the squat rack for a reason, and that reason, I believe, is cookies. But that's just me. Our next story features a man, nay, a hero, who wants nothing more than to enjoy his nachos. And when someone dares get between this man and his salty, cheesy goodness, he's not taking it. Story 1 My brother-in-law is 32, wife and I are 25, and while I don't doubt that some of his issues are real, autism, ADHD, set point obesity, it is my distinct impression that he exploits people's perception of these things to be a controlling jerk. In the family, saying such things is completely forbidden, however. We offered to take my mother-in-law and father-in-law out for Easter dinner so no one has to cook. The timing offered was strategic, since we knew brother-in-law had planned on watching a TikTok live stream of some 19-year-old influencer who is blowing up right now. I guess either he got the time wrong or she cancelled early so my heart sank when he was coming along, because I knew there was going to be drama. We went to a place famous for bar food and I ordered nachos. My wife begged me to order something else, but she wasn't direct with me about the problem and I didn't get her hints. As soon as I took my first bite of nachos, my brother-in-law started shrieking like a child and throwing a little tantrum. But the crunch was killing him. And he's going to lose it because black olives don't belong on nachos because they are from Spain and not Mexico. My wife, mother-in-law and father-in-law told me I really screwed up and that I was making him uncomfortable. In a moment of pure honesty, I told them that the list of not allowed around Brian is so long and tucking ridiculous that I can't keep up. My wife said she tried to tell me. I said, no, you didn't tell me. You danced around it like we do every time this creep ruins a family function. Brother-in-law, father-in-law, and mother-in-law got up and left leaving us with the bill and needless to say, things between me and my wife have been tense ever since. And we really haven't spoken. I am absolutely the jerk for my choice of words after he freaked out, and I get that. But I also think things needed to be said. But my question is, am I the jerk for ordering the nachos? My wife says I should have known since she's sure she's told me, and I had to have noticed that they never have chips around because his misophonia can't handle the crunch. Am I the jerk here? In the comments, Snoo said, Nacho problem. Union of Onion added, I can't believe your in-laws are jalapeno grill about some cheesy chip goodness. The whole judge said, not the jerk. No one can let their problems move to other people. If brother-in-law cannot cope, then he has to remove himself from those situations? What would he have done if the people at the table right next to him ordered the nachos? You are always the jerk said, yeah, that's not how autism works. If you have sensory issues related to the sound of the crunch, there's this magical thing known as headphones. Don Q on Ice replied, Exactly. If someone has a lot of sensory issues with eating, it's so easy to eat with headphones on. Mark Lahr added, But then the brother-in-law's personality disorder wouldn't be soothed by being a massive controlling jerk to everyone around him. Think of his feelings. Sarcasm, in case it wasn't clear. OP's reaction may be a tad over the top, but it sounds like he was pushed to the limits. The brother-in-law's aversion to the crunch was really the nacho that broke the camel's back. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that headphones and or earplugs are commonly carried by anyone with sensory issues. Especially when going somewhere noisy in public, where you really can't control the crunchiness of others. So, seems to me like OP's take on this is pretty accurate. Not the jerk. Our second story comes with a whole different set of problems. As one woman sets out to solve her family of picky eaters entitled attitude around food, by going on mom strike after they made one face too many. The family rejoices their newfound culinary freedom, but uh-oh, they now have to feed the coalition of moaning and groaning mouths and it all comes crashing down as they turn on each other. Story two. I'm a 41-year-old female and I live with my husband, 41-year-old male and daughters, 10 and 17. Husband is a piggy eater, which I've known for about 20 years. I'm used to making food and having husband and or kids making faces, gagging, taking an hour to pick at a single serving, or just outright refusing to eat. My husband is notorious for coming home from work, 
taking one look at the dinner I've made and opting for a frozen pizza. Most of the meals I make cater to their specific wants, like spaghetti. 10-year-old daughter only eats the plain noodles. 17-year-old daughter eats the noodles with a scrambled egg on top, no sauce. Husband only eats noodles with a specific brand of tomato sauce with ground beef in it. If I use any other sauce, even homemade, I'm going to be eating leftovers for a week. So it's just the one recipe of spaghetti. These days, husband complains that we have a lot of the same meals over and over. It's true, but when I've explained why that's true, it doesn't seem to sink in. I can only make a few things that everyone in the family will reliably eat and those get old. A couple of nights ago, I made a shepherd's pie. I used a new recipe with seasoned ground beef, three of three like, peas, two of three like, and tomatoes, one of three like, one of three tolerate, with the turmeric mashed potato top layer. Two of three will eat mashed potato. Predictably, 10-year-old daughter ate a single bite then gagged and ended up throwing hers away. 17-year-old daughter ate part of a single bowl then put hers in the trash. Husband came home late and wasn't hungry. I was so tired of reactions to my food and putting in the effort for years, and it all finally came down on me at once. I burst into tears and cried all night and the next morning. So I told my husband that I was done cooking. From here on out, he would be responsible for evening meals. I would still do breakfast for the girls and lunch when they weren't in school, but otherwise it was up to him. He said, what about when I work late? I told him he needed to figure it out. I told him that between him and the girls, I no longer found any joy in cooking and baking. Also, that I hated the way he and the girls made me feel when they reacted to my food, that I was tired of the yuck faces and refusals to eat when I made something new. I said how it broke my heart every time. This morning he had to work, so he got up early to do some meal prep. He was clearly angry. Huh, he's angry. He said he doesn't understand why I said I hated him. He said he doesn't know what to do and thinks I'm being unfair and punishing him. He said I make things that don't appeal to kids sometimes and I can't expect them to like it when I make Greek style lemon chicken soup. 17 year old daughter enjoyed it. 10 year old daughter and husband hated it. I countered that I make plenty of chicken nuggets, mac and cheese, grilled cheese, etc. But that picky or not, there's such a thing as respect for a person's efforts. So am I the jerk? Relevant comments. What does your husband do in terms of splitting chores? He works as a retail manager every day except Wednesday and Thursday. I work from home on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays, afternoon to evening shift. We live on a hobby farm, so farm chores fall to me, unless it's plowing the driveway because the tractor is old and fickle. We typically share large outdoor projects like firewood stacking, coop cleaning, and yard cleanup. Daily chores are mine. I also do all the house cleaning, laundry, paperwork, bill paying, school events, pet care and vet appointments, medical appointments, childcare, gift shopping, and shipping and errands. Husband is usually good about picking up some groceries on his way home from work. He has recently stepped up to making some of the meals on nights when I work if I didn't already have something in the crock pot. Wasting food. Most of our scraps go to the chickens, ducks, or dog. This time, I was out of the room crying when they threw the stuff away in the trash. What exactly is your policy when they don't eat the food? The policy has always been try it first, and then, especially with the 10-year-old daughter, to ask why they don't like it. So if it's a texture thing, or flavor, or ketchup would help, I work with that. Like, I know the youngest doesn't like sauce or gravy, so I'll usually keep some of whatever it is reserved to the side so it doesn't get sauced. The family likes overbaked fish, but 10 year old daughter said she doesn't like the black stuff, pepper. So hers is lightly salted and done. If she picks at a meal without eating a reasonable amount, she's allowed to be done if she agrees there will be no snacking or dessert afterwards. If she or any of them puts in the effort and it's just not their favorite, but they tried, that's good enough for me. It's the facial expressions and complaints that do me in. They don't have to love it, but if you're going to pick at it and then dump the plate and grab a bag of chips, I'm going to be hurt and upset, you know? Any allergies or food issues? Husband has a mild food allergy to onions, so those are not used in the house. Unless it's something solely for someone else like salsa. He has to ingest it or handle peeled onions to get a reaction. He's been to a doc for stomach and digestive stuff, and aside from a recommendation for more fiber, there was nothing wrong with him. 10-year-old daughter's regular pediatrician says she seems healthy and isn't malnourished. 
so they're not concerned much over her pickiness as a medical problem. Have you ever expressed your dislike of their reactions before and or tried to figure out what they like? Many, many times. I sat down with my husband when we first got together and worked out a list of things he would not eat so I could develop workarounds. To his credit, he's made progress over the years in trying things before he rejects them. He has learned to like, for example, sour cream in his mashed potatoes, even though he hates sour cream by itself. Most of the things he does like are isolated flavors in a particular style. He eats exactly two kinds of pie, raspberry and French silk. But the silk has to be on a graham cracker crust with no whipped cream or chocolate curls, and the raspberry has to be a classic double crust. No tart style crumble top or other cobbler adjacent types. Using apples is a mortal sin. Update one, one month later. I spoke with each family member individually about their behavior. 10 year old daughter apologized profusely and said that sometimes she doesn't like my cooking. 17 year old daughter said she appreciated that I make varied recipes, even if she didn't always like them. She has only been with us since she was 16 and didn't grow up with us. It was a bit too long and off topic for the original post. She also said that she wanted to cook, but had seen husband and 10 year old daughter's reactions to mine and was put off it. Wow, shocker. Husband accepted the jerk judgment from the sub and to his credit, he planned and executed every evening meal. The kids ate his meals, but husband's lack of finesse, overboiled vegetables, untrimmed meat, soggy pasta, etc., caused some picked over meals from the kids. Everything was edible though. And he very politely asked for some tips on things like how long to cook rice. But I did not physically help. I reassured him that I wasn't trying to watch him fail, but that I needed him to learn a lesson. After a couple of weeks, both kids were tired of husband's oft-repeated recipes, homemade pizza, Korean beef and veggie bowls, and nuggets and fries. And he was stressed trying to get home from work in time to get meals done. The very first night, 10-year-old daughter cried over her dry, gross pizza crust. Husband fought her over it and both of them looked to me to solve the issue. I redirected 10-year-old daughter to husband, saying it's his call since it's his dinner. With several meals, he made way too much mediocre food and had to eat leftovers for days, which was cathartic. Eventually, I sat down with husband and we evaluated the fallout. Husband said it hurt when the girls didn't like his food and it was hard to plan things ahead on nights he worked late. He also admitted he was in a rut for recipes and that it was hard to modify for people's preferences. There is now a posted schedule and rule set that all family members are expected to adhere to. Each kid picked a night to cook. 10-year-old daughter has Sunday. 17-year-old daughter has Saturday. Husband and I split the weekdays according to work schedules. Since he works late on Monday and Friday, I took those. I work Tuesday and Thursday nights, so those belong to him. Wednesday is a flex day. Anyone can cook or we might go out and group projects are encouraged. The rules are no gagging, faces or complaining. Cook chooses the meal, period. Assistance may be requested by anyone. Special ingredient requests must be made a minimum of two days in advance. So far, so good. 17 year old daughter has been learning a lot of techniques. 10 year old daughter is thrilled to be addressed as chef by whoever is assisting her and no one has yet broken any of the rules. Husband more easily asks for my advice when he's cooking, how to season, how long to cook things, which is a huge improvement. It's too early to declare victory and it takes a long time to make permanent changes, but it's encouraging progress. Thanks everyone for the advice and the support. Relevant comment. Did your husband actually apologize? Yes, he did. In the comments, Frugality Reality said, 41 year old men acting like my nine year old. Boy Cub Piglet replied, well, in his defense, he's teaching a 10 year old and 17 year old to do the same thing by setting a precedent. Wait, that wasn't in his defense at all. Such a fat, fat cat said, I'm so glad that the whole family is working on a plan to prepare meals. Eating picky eaters sucks the joy out of cooking. I finally got tired of making multiple dinners in order to accommodate preferences and started telling my husband and kids, this is what's for dinner, eat it or don't. PB and J is always available. A chilly day said, sucks it has to get to the point where someone breaks emotionally for change to happen. I'm glad there's a happy ending. This reminded me of the one post where the husband was crying while trying to recreate his wife's homemade pasta for some reason. I'm gonna go find it so I can bathe in his tears. Strike action will always command attention and it is a fantastic tactic for teaching important lessons. <laughs> 
OP was definitely pushed to the limits here, and it's easy to see why. She clearly does a lot for this household, and there's a reason some consider cooking and baking a labor of love. To gag, scoff, and make faces when someone is doing their best. Not only to put food on the table, but to accommodate everyone's preferences? Well, that is like snubbing her. And it's just simply disrespectful. It won't do. And what did she do about it? She turned this into a teachable moment for the entire family. And everyone wins in the end. Hubby gets it now. The kids learn life skills. OP took a little off her plate. See what I did there? And the family is working together. It warms my heart. Be sure to keep an eye out for the next video, which warms my heart in a different way. That reference to the teary-eyed husband recreating his wife's pasta? Well, you all know I would never leave you hanging. It had to wait for the next video, though. Who knew a story about someone's soul being crushed would be so long? And that's it for today. Until next time, shine bright, Starlight. Yahoo! If you've enjoyed the story and would like to hear more, consider liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. Thanks, and bye for now.